And can you just give us just a general idea on how it's been working for you in sailplanes like this? Fantastic. I was using it for about three quarters of a season before I started using the flight loggers. Now that I'm using the flight loggers in each airplane, um, it's just so simple to do the installation. You, you put it in, you range check it, it tells you exactly what receiver is working good, which one's not. You go and move things around, and I mean, in 15 minutes, I can have a, the whole system optimized to the point that, you know, I don't worry about it. So I'm here with Larry Jolly, 13-time world team member. 13 times. Is that an unlucky number or what? It might be. I don't know if I'm going to make it again, but it's certainly been a long journey. Well, congratulations. That's Thank awesome. You. Pretty incredible. Obviously, the folks that have been around uh, soaring, and gosh, you've done a lot of modeling. So, Larry, you have a, a model here. You said it's called an Aspire. Is that correct? Yes, this is a Lubosch Pasterka. It's an airplane called the Aspire. It's a 3.7-meter F3J model. And uh, this one uh, has been... Uh, modified in such a way from the factory that it's uh, got a Kevlar nose on it, so it's what we call 2.4 friendly in the sailplane world. And as far as your radio installation goes, can you kind of show us where you have the remotes and what you have going on here? Sure. Uh, in the nose is where the uh, battery pack is, 2700 mil pack. I have a 921 main receiver right behind it, and underneath uh, the servo tray into the back area here is a remote receiver. Uh, it is uh, oriented so the, the antennas are 90 degrees to the front antennas. And you also said that you, I, I see you don't have a, a flight log in here, but certainly um, you use a flight log? I always use a flight log. The flight log is the only thing that will tell you whether you've got a good installation or not. Because we fly these models a long way off the field, as you can tell, John, today we're way off field here. Uh, 15 minutes is a long time out. And uh, we use a data logger so that we can go ahead and customize our antenna installation and best suit it to the needs of the airplane. In other words, we go ahead and actually data log our results and uh, see where our feints are. We know when we have a hold, but we don't know whether our receivers are getting blocked. And that's, that's the biggest thing for us, is to really optimize that antenna installation. Something you can't do, certainly when I was flying 72, you can never do it. I just automatically lengthened the antenna and hope for the best. But now we, we can go ahead and really optimize the antenna solution. So you say that, and stepping back a little further, what's been your experience with uh, 2.4 uh, DSM technology? I, I got to be honest with you. I, I was really shy at first. I, I told John last year, uh, John Denise, our product, our product manager, I said, John, you know, I'm looking forward to trying 2.4 after the contest season. And we laugh about it all the time now because I won't fly anything but 2.4. Uh, it lets me go ahead and make sure I've got the right model match in the transmitter. I don't make any mistakes. And I, I just don't run that chance of someone shooting me down or even shooting somebody else down. It's really a good feeling. The DSM stuff works. It's always worked. I have better range than I've ever had. I. I'm flying the new 12 here, and it's probably my last radio. I don't know you, until you come up with something better. Gosh, that's a great testimonial, Larry. Hey, for our viewers out there that are in the process of uh, installing this or considering installing this in a carbon fiber sailplane, let's say a full carbon fiber sailplane, what uh, tips or hints or anything you can suggest for guys uh, uh, trying it for the first time that, that kind of have that, they're a little leery about it, 2.4, not quite sure if it's for me. What, uh, what tips do you have for those guys? Okay, first off, it, it is for you. But, you know, our sleek sailplane designs with the little skinny fuselages and the new composite materials do offer a challenge for an optimal antenna installation. And if you're running an all-carbon airplane, uh, we've uh, been testing some solutions. As you know, John, I've took part of the antenna testing with the new exposed antennas. But we've even just used the uh, 921s with the exposed whispers. Uh, it's called the Whiskers series. Uh, a couple of the guys in the blogs have made out told us how to install that and you know it works fine the real solution is to get the remote separated either put it in the wing or back underneath and make sure that you've got two antennas exposed if it's possible put a fiberglass canopy over it uh, give it a chance uh, if you're still having problems uh, try to move it forward in the airplane uh, we did some range testing on the ground as you know at a distance and we found that in reality in the end uh, the solution for the maximum uh, uh, reception on the receiver mm -hmm. is going to be the shadow on the wing because yeah. the wing is all carbon and it is the determining factor but we're talking way way out where nothing's going to work anyway yeah that makes sense so we've got uh we've got four rounds under your belt so far today is that right? four, five. four five and so how are you doing so far well, i wish i would have throw we had a broken line uh, in the very first oh. flight group and i chose not to relaunch as you know we were having a problem here with broken lines so i'm uh, not going to make the fly off this year but we're uh, doing well and we're having a great contest and the guys i'm helping are in the top 10 so hey you know it lasted out here and have a great time well, fantastic. There you have it from one of the top uh, sailplane pilots and definitely one of the veteran sailplane pilots in the country. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Larry. Appreciate it. Bye, John.